understanding among the scholars of music history that the great violin maker Antony Stradivari had a mentor. Among the rare 600 instruments valued at over 20 million dollars each by Stradivari, there is one with a maker marker noting the additional name of Amati. Scholars believe Niccolo Amati was his mentor, though this is tenuous at best, given they only have one violin with one tiny note in it to prove it. Well, a dendrochronologist, do you know what that is? It's a big, fancy word. You're going to want to use it at all your parties for the next week. It's a person who measures the rings of trees, essentially. Dr. Mauro Bernabe had an idea measuring the age of trees. He thought, what if I could measure the rings in a Stradivarius instrument and compare it with the rings of an Amati instrument? So a small harp and a cello were found, and the rings of wood on the curls at the end proved without a doubt that they were carved from the same piece of wood. The two instruments made by two people obviously shared a workspace or at least a wood provider. That means that they were more than likely keeping shop together, supporting the theory that Amadi was Stradivari's mentor. This illustrates the interconnection of things, I think, of objects and people, strings tying us ever more together in terms of quantum physics. This is quite literally true. We are bound together. It's a brilliant way to think about the importance of the doctrine of the Trinity in our church, today being Trinity Sunday. The Trinity is at the center of our theology about creation and the cosmos, our understanding of ministry and mission and evangelism and service to others. There it is. It is at the core of our work as a Christian community to be bound together as one, just as those hymns kept saying to us over and over, repeating our diversity and our unity together. It is at the center of our life, loving one another and those in our wider communities. The Trinity is a doctrine that invites us to consider God's outflowing love of God's self which leads us to the person of Christ Jesus and the outflowing of the Holy Spirit that Jesus celebrated on Pentecost, the beginning of all things, though. There is a generous orthodoxy in here, an orthodox faith, the eternal, the internal life of God, of the Trinity, which is a mystery, and its outflowing, which is experienced by the faithful. It is literally handed off from me to those being baptized, to those I confirm, to those I ordain. It is rooted in every prayer that we say in the Episcopal Church, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In our Eucharistic feast, as Jesus the shepherd passed this to the disciples, so we shepherd one another in passing it along, our great high priest showing us the way. Like a Amati to his novice, Stradivari, like the rings shared in the wood of their instruments were made from one commonality, shared physically and spiritually with each other, attached and strung together. Today, we remember and we celebrate the core, the foundation, the inseparability of each of us and of the Trinity with our very proclamation and action as Episcopalians. Today, we remind ourselves in the baptism that we are getting ready to do that nothing separates us from each other and nothing separates us from the love of God. We remind ourselves by virtue of baptism that we are forever 
forever united in the family of God, drawn in by God's gift of grace through Jesus upon his cross, by the indwelling and embracing power of the Spirit. We are you and I, Michael and Camilla. We are forever members of the divine community in heaven and on earth. We celebrate in the doctrine of the Trinity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.